now a prototype of the submarine stalking autonomous ship that could scour the open seas for months at a time has been officially transferred to the U.S. Navy. The vessel is currently a surveillance platform and has no weapons on board. It can reach speed of 27 knots and uses cameras and radar to track its location and spot other ships. Scroll down for video after two years of testing the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. DARPA has officially transferred the ship to the Office of Naval Research ONR. ONR will continue to develop the prototype vehicle and when it enters service. The ship will operate for around 30 to 90 days at sea without a crew powered by two diesel engines. The ship can reach speeds of 27 knots per hour. The vessel cost around $20 million, 14 million pounds to build and around $20,000, 14,000 pounds. A day to run which is significantly less expensive than crew run ships. Alexander Wallen, a program manager in DARPA's Tactical Technology Office, TTL said the move marks a significant milestone in developing large-scale USV technology and autonomy capabilities. The anti-submarine warfare vessel could join active naval operations as early as 2018 and would hail in a new era of warship. When it enters service, the ship will operate for around 30 to 90 days at sea without a crew. Sea Hunter relies on radar and cameras to spot other vessels and will leave and return to port on its own. Powered by two diesel engines, the ship can reach speeds of 27 knots per hour. The vessel cost around $20 million, 14 million pounds to build and around $20,000, 14,000 pounds a day to run which is significantly less. Expensive than crew run ships, while initial vessel tests require a pilot on board the ship. Later tests are planned to have no personnel on board in initial testing of Sea Hunter's autonomy capability back in 2016. The ship successfully executed a multi waypoint mission with no person directing course or speed changes. The completion of Sea Hunter's performance trials was the first milestone in the two-year test program co-sponsored by DARPA and the Office of Naval Research. Experts say the vessel has the potential to revolutionize not only the military's maritime service but also commercial shipping. The full-size prototype could pave the way to developing crewless cargo vessels for the commercial shipping industry someday. Our collaboration with ONR has brought closer to reality a future fleet in which both manned warships and capable large unmanned vessels complement each other to accomplish diverse, evolving missions. Sea Hunter is designed to operate for extended periods at sea with no person on board and only sparse supervisory control throughout deployment. While initial vessel tests require a pilot on board the ship, later tests are planned to have no personnel on board. ACTEL represents a new vision of naval surface warfare that trades small numbers of very capable, high-value assets for large numbers of commoditized, simpler platforms that are more capable in the aggregate, said Fred Kennedy. TTO Director The U.S. military has talked about the strategic importance of replacing king and queen pieces on the maritime. Chessboard with lots of pawns and active is a first step toward doing exactly that back in 2016. The ship successfully executed a multi-waypoint mission with no person directing course or speed changes. The completion of Sea Hunter's performance trials was the first milestone in the two-year test program co-sponsored by DARPA and the Office of Naval Research. Testing in 2016 including developing sensors, the vessel's autonomy suite complies with maritime collision regulations and proof-of-concept demonstrations for a variety of U.S. Navy missions. Experts say the vessel has the potential to revolutionize not only the military's maritime service but also commercial shipping. The full-size prototype could pave the way to developing crewless cargo vessels for the commercial shipping industry someday. Countries from Europe to Asia have been looking into developing fleets of unmanned ships to cut down on operating costs but the idea has sparked debate over whether it's possible to make robotic boats safe enough to run on their own far from land.
The International Transport Workers Federation, the union representing more than half of the world's more than one million seafarers, has said it does not believe technology will ever be able to replace the ability of humans to foresee and react to the various dangers at sea. Freak's there.